What's going on folks? Ted from Nerd Immersion here and today I was doing my series of interviews over at uh, Gen Con and I, I had met with the WizKids folks. We talked through a bunch of the stuff that they're working on and we were kind of pressed for time because we're going through so many awesome things and oh my god folks, the WizKids stuff that's coming out, so much good stuff. I'm blown away and uh, rather than uh, sit down and try to cram an interview in. Basically, uh, we talked about a bunch of stuff. I was able to film and take pictures of a bunch of things. And then I thought I would basically articulate to you what we discussed, and I'll cut it in with footage of the various things. So one of the first things I can show you, because I have a physical copy, is this. Now, I will be doing a full review of this probably once I get home, but these are the new sprue-based miniatures from WizKids, right? So I have some samples here. You can see this is the Elf Ranger. So if I were to go ahead and open this up, it you'll see that it is indeed sprued miniatures, right? So these are ones where you can, you know, you basically clip off the little pieces and you can kind of build out your own little mini. And there's a variety of different options, heads, hands, arms, weapons, and so on. You can make your own. There's four in this set. And then they have plans for a lot more. We talked about these in the past, but uh, different sets like kobolds and orcs and a big balor. Um, and they told me there's a lot of really cool stuff with this. So, for example, one of the things they did was with, like, the kobolds and the orcs, they basically made a variety of different arm pieces. So if you wanted to basically have, like, all right, this one's got a spear. This one's got a spear with a skull. This one has a spear with two skulls. And that was, like, a way for you to design it and build out your miniatures so that you don't have to worry about describing. Like, when your players say, I want to attack the kobold or the orc, which one do I attack? You can basically say... All right, one skull, two skull, three skull. So you have like a means in miniature to have a differentiation between them while still being like a same unit. So I thought that was really cool. And they said some of these or a lot of these also have obviously pieces tied to the specific mini, but they also have what they're kind of calling like uh, miniature agnostic pieces so that you can mix and match and sort of almost inherently designed kit bashing for you to make that. And I guess I should say, for those of you who don't know what kit bashing is, it's where you take different parts of different miniatures and you sort of bash them together to make something custom. Uh, and that's something, again, I'm not gonna say it's for the it's more advanced, but it kind of is for folks that have been doing miniatures for a while or do like the wargaming and that kind of stuff that have the sprue miniatures, you, you can kind of create and make your own custom miniatures rather than just, you know, what's available to you just out of the box. So that was pretty cool. So these are in the process, like I said, full unboxing of this in the future. They also told me they are going to be uh, releasing their own line of different tools, like a hobby knife and a sprue cutter and things like that. So you'll have your own uh, WizKids branded frameworks uh, tools, which isn't necessarily like a thing that everybody needs. But if you're new to the hobby and you want to get started, they're going to provide everything for you along with like the paint line and things like that. So some of the other things that I saw and we talked about, one, obviously, first off is Tiamat, right? They had a miniature here at the show, and like I said, you'll probably be seeing either video or pictures of it on screen, but it is phenomenal. For some reason, I thought it would be bigger. I, I know that's like, a, that's a minor nitpick. It's a massive mini, in, mini, right, in comparison, air quotes, uh, but it, the sculpt is beautiful. The details look amazing. Uh, the wings and the tail come apart so they were able to reduce the size of the box so that it'd be easier to ship. And obviously, again, once I get my hands on one, I'll do a full uh, review for you there. Uh, so that was one thing. And we, in so many words, uh, it was alluded to in a bunch of these things that there's more stuff to come. So without actually confirming, but kind of confirming that... You can probably expect, if this does well, which it obviously will, uh, a similar style dragon. And they were, like, alluding to things that were similar in nature. Uh, so what that means to me is we will expect a Bahamut figure at some point. And I believe that would also mean that we'll get, like, a Sar Sardior, Sariador, whatever it is, the, the ruby uh, dragon, the gem dragon god as well. So there was that. Uh, another thing they showed off was their yawning portal, which they had there, which actually wasn't there when I did the live stream on Thursday. They set it up yesterday. And if you recall, this was announced back in, like, 
uh, end of last year or earlier this year. It was supposed to actually ship in April, but they went back to the drawing board because it had a lower level section and then like an upper level section that was all made out of cardboard. And they've actually took that back, got rid of the cardboard entirely, and made an entire Warlock's like plastic upper level. So it's a two tier tavern. And it's awesome. And they even have like an infinity mirror uh, like well to go down into Undermountain. It looks amazing. And obviously you could even just take the double layer tavern and make it your own. It doesn't have to be the yawning portal. Or you could expand on it or buy two sets and stack them. Very exciting stuff. They also had plushies, which I thought was interesting. They're making their own series of like mini D&D plushies. They're going to have a mimic, a owlbear, a displacer beast, and a beholder. And it's cool because the Displacer Beast's tentacles and the uh, the Beholder's eye stalks are completely bendable and moldable. And you can put them in any position you want, which I thought was neat. Uh, they had the Gold Dragon there behind closed doors. I have some video uh, and some images of that, uh, which has the removable heads. One with the fire breathing coming out of it. The other one with just a open mouth. Uh, and I said, is this something we can expect? Sorry, I was bumping the table there. Uh, is this something you can we can expect in the future? And they say, well, now that they've kind of gotten it out and it's, you know, kind of been perfected, yeah, we might be seeing more multiple-headed dragons in the future where one maybe has a breath weapon and then you can replace it with another one. Uh, they alluded to, again, they, they didn't have the emerald dragon there, but that's obviously going to be coming out. And I said, is that going to be similar to your sapphire dragon? And they said it will be, but it's a little bit better. I, they said it's basically a little bit better because they've hand narrowed down the more translucent gem style molds that they want to do. So it's a little uh, nicer looking in comparison. Uh, just basically improved quality uh, over the uh, the original Sapphire Dragon, which was great, by the way. So don't, don't discount that at all. Uh, they also showed off their gaming mats. So they have these new... Uh, Warlock gaming mats. They're a hard, like a, a nice solid uh, non-slip plastic on the back and a sort of gridded, one inch gridded felt almost material on the top for you to basically, not for erase, wet erase, dry erase, but for you to basically put your tiles and stuff on. So whether you're using Warlock tiles, uh, you know, or you're using some other form of terrain that you have, you have basically big long mats of a variety of different things. Those are coming out soon. You'll have like tundra and grasslands and forests and uh, I think a cave. And they're also doing in the future smaller 24 by 24 for like a cavern and underwater lake and a, um, a lava sort of um, like terrain. And the next set of warlock tiles that's coming out is going to be caverns. So it's going to be like pieces to do your cave style things with rope bridges. And I got to see some of the early renders of that and that was really neat looking. Uh, let's see. Oh, the 2D minis, the Idols of the Realms. By the way, a lot of you have been asking me what the status is of those. So I asked them bluntly, and I said, what's the deal with the Idols of the Realms? And they basically agreed that there was some production issues. As you saw in my video where some of the plastic peeled the paint right off of the flat pack minis, they have since gone back to the drawing board. They have revamped things, and they are going to be releasing the Icewind Dale flat pack minis, the Idols of the Realms, soon i think within the next month and they will have uh they will be uh sort of like the white dragon a frost giant a frost giant skeleton and then shortly after that they'll be releasing the 2d the original ones that i had received the early versions of the updated versions of those that have fixed a lot of the production quality issues there so that'll be coming out soon uh they showed off the wild beyond the witch light minis and the Jabberwock is one of the minis, which I thought was pretty interesting considering Pathfinder just released a Jabberwock in, or Jabberwocky in their set. So now you have two different mini sculpts for that. I also got to see uh, images and close-ups of the Swamp Light, the Swamp Gas Balloon, which is the premium figure for Wild Beyond the Witchlight, showing off, you know, the little extra vehicle. They also told me that there's going to be a Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons set coming out. So... Uh, he said it's going to be a very good year for dragons, right? So we obviously have the gem dragons, we have the metallic dragons, we have the illusion to uh, perhaps a, a you know a ruby dragon jack, gem a dragon god and a Bahamut. And then I also said I know when you guys announced you know Avriaturis, the white, uh, you know the, the ancient dragon, the big one. Uh, it was said that you guys were going to work on more of those in the future. 
uh, and I haven't heard anything about it. What's the status with that? And I was basically told, stay tuned. Uh, something may be coming out sooner than you think. So not only will we be getting an Emerald Dragon and a uh, Gold Dragon, we also may be getting another big dragon. The Green Dragon's right around the corner, and a whole Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons set, which will likely include many different Draconic creatures as well. Uh, let's see. What else we do? We talked about the Critical Role uh, unpainted miniatures. Uh, I have some images of some of those, but then we also talked about the... I saw early images of Dieter, the Dragon Turtle mini, and the Ember Rock, which were they just look amazing. Um, I think that's... Oh, uh, I talked about the Caverns. I also said, while well, you guys are doing... And they said the one coming after the Caverns Warlock set is Sewers. And I said, now all you need to do is, like, some trees. And, like, forest terrain, outdoor stuff. And they basically said, stay tuned. So it seems like they are on... Uh, they basically have a thumb on the pulse of what the community wants when it comes to these kinds of things. And they're also doing their best to try and cover every, uh, I don't want to call it skill level, but basically every level of uh, dedication to this hobby, right? With the 2D minis, with the 3D pa painted minis, 3D unpainted minis, and now sprue custom miniatures that you can make. Uh, they also said they're going to be doing uh, like sprue kits, as well, similar to like their paint and take mini sets that they have, they're going to be doing like sprue kits. So it's like a kit with paints and stuff that you can, you know, all in one set, which I thought was a good idea. Um, we talked about the Wand of Orcus coming out. And uh, they also had on display, again, I don't really think it's been talked about too much. Uh, they're doing, they're going to be doing an Efreeti statue uh, from like the, uh, the Monster Manual or the Dungeon Master's Guide, the old Dungeon Master's Guide, but they're actually have a statue of the Gith Yankee from the front cover of the old, like, first edition Fiend folio, you know, with the sword, kind of like this. They had that statue here, and I have a couple pictures of it, but they had it here at the show, and it's kind of the... It's not really designed to be a piece that you play with. It's designed to be a high-end statue that you have on a shelf as, like, a display piece, which is pretty awesome. And I got to see it, and I had, like I said, it's in one of the, the cases, so you can see it when you're here. Uh, and the only other thing I will say to you is I did, as many of you have asked me to, and I thought it would be my case, uh, an opportunity. And I said, listen, I don't know if it's in the plans or what's what you guys are working on. But I said, if you guys were to make holy symbols on like a chain or a necklace, now I could go and commission somebody to make me a holy symbol, sure. But if you were to make holy symbols with the D&D &D license for the various Forgotten Realms deities people would gobble those up, right? You make me a Mealiki symbol that's a unicorn, or a Time War symbol that's a coin, or, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, a uh, Kalimvor symbol that's the scale with the, you know, the skeleton hands and stuff on it. People would buy those, and probably multiples of those for their multiple characters. So I said, I don't know, you know, what kind of ability you have to bring this back and, you know, do stuff like that, but people want it, and if it's something, you know, if you're looking for new ideas... I'm telling you this will sell. So I brought it up to them. I can't promise it's going to lead anywhere. Uh, but, you know, I said you guys are doing all these really cool things with these like, big products, and these, you know, the dragon heads on the wall and the Drizzt statue and all this. But I really think you would be in your best interest to, to do this. Any kind of D&D &D prop style thing I think would do well. So there you go, folks. That is what I talked about with the WizKids, folks. A lot of really cool stuff coming out. Oh, and they also showed me um, there's a Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft miniature set coming out as well. So most of these are going to cover, obviously, the new monsters in those books. So any of the new monsters that were added via Van Richten's Guide will likely get covered in the Van Richten's Guide uh, to everything book. And, uh, you know, I'm, I was having seen... The Wild Beyond the Witchlight, uh, you know, the miniatures that they have. There's a couple that I'm pretty excited for, the Jabberwock being the big one, but they also have a giant frog that's actually eating somebody with just the boots sticking out of its mouth. But that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I, I had an absolute blast. So thank you, WizKids, for giving me the time uh, to conduct that interview and, and take a look behind the scenes. It was cool. They had the booth and they had a whole like back area with like a small little room with a whole bunch of stuff that you could take a look at. And then I got to see a bunch of the stuff, like early renders on a, on the lap on a laptop and stuff. It was really cool. Um, definitely made me feel like uh, like 
I made it like exclusive stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I uh, hope you guys got to see, you know, enjoyed the videos and the pictures and stuff that I took. Um, if you're here at the show, definitely go check out the Yawning Portal. It looks really, really cool. Uh, and obviously you can go check out Tiamat as well. But yeah, like I said, in the future I will, I'll definitely be breaking these out and assembling at least one of these. So in this box is the Elf Ranger, Dwarf Cleric, Orc Barbarian, and Human Druid. Um, so anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.